So this thing here was the censored mystery box that we had in that video yesterday, the New Balance SC Elite V4 video, and I have been waiting on this thing since I saw it at TRE. It is the Valkyrie Carbon Elite, and it looks to be one of the hopefully top new Piva racers that's designed specifically for people like me. So this thing is supposed to be for converted athletes who are now runners. Look at that. TYR. Man, this is a good looking box. Ooh, I like what they're doing with this. They're going for the something a little bit different that we haven't seen in the running game. Look at this black and silver. All these other brands go with kind of neon, aggressive, hype colorways. This is a little bit of a more muted, muted with the metallic. And then they got their slogan there, always in front. Let's go. Boom. Okay, so this is a really interesting shoe because the Valkyrie Elite Carbon is from TYR, which is a brand that we haven't really seen in the running space before. Now, TYR is known as more of a swim brand. They also broke into the gym segment a little bit. And when I saw this shoe at TRE, I was just super intrigued what and kind of a startup in the running space brand could do with a new shoe, given their DNA of making really high quality products in other fields and so holding this in hand it looks like a racer it feels like a racer and look at that first thing i noticed guys we have been critiquing the laces they put perfect laces on this thing these are exactly like those vaporfly 2 laces i anticipate this will have a really nice lockdown but something that is a little bit different in the shoe and what the value proposition and differentiation of this is is it's going with a wider base up here in the front. It's supposed to be a little bit better for mid to forefoot strikers. And it's supposed to support bigger and taller athletes a little better as well because this is a brand who designs a lot of their products for people who are coming from more of that sport and lifting background. So with that, we do see a 100% Piva Faux midsole and you can see the beads in here. This is almost identical to what we see in the Saucony Power Run PB. We'll do a little comparison with the Pro 3. And then overall, this shoe just looks really clean. There's not too much going on. It's just designed as a nice, serious looking shoe. And when I talked to the product designers at TRE, they actually mentioned they were able to get this thing spun up pretty quickly. They knew exactly what they wanted. They wanted a nice, aggressive four foot rocker here. So you can see we get a lot of stack and I think the drop is gonna be a little bit lower than 10 millimeters. I'll get the exact specs, flash them up here on the screen. But then the four foot rocker is really strong up here. So pretty tall stack, both in the heel and the front and we get a nice aggressive curve up here. The feel of the foam here in the midsole, again, very similar to that Saucony Power Run PB, which is not too soft, not too firm, really nice and bouncy. And I think this might actually be sourced straight from Arkema, who makes that p for Saucony and might be the exact same compound here that we're seeing. Of course, in the middle, we got a carbon fiber plate and it doesn't look like this is gonna be a Rock Catcher 5000 actually. It looks like this is the perfect to cut out here. And overall, the shoe is very, simple there's nothing too crazy going on they've gone to basically straight down the middle of the plate a 96 mile an hour fastball nice lightweight upper they actually have gone with a little bit of a tpu or some sort of overlay here which might be nice if you're running in wet weather with this thing to keep a little bit of that water out and then around the back just a little bit of padding and overall feeling this in my hands it's like they looked at what makes a good racer and they applied that changed it maybe five percent went for not messing things up and here we go it looks like a really solid first shoe with a little bit of the brand's dna infused in there i like how they put this little winged logo on the inside and then they have their logo just stamped right there on the forefoot so you can see it's from tyr i saw someone on one of the online forums say that uh, they couldn't put their logo here because it wasn't swooshy enough and we need to have some sort of swoosh around but in terms of how racers go i would wear this for casual if there weren't a carbon plate in it because it, it looks really nice and if they make a drop down training version of this they are going to make a plastic plated version called the Speedworks. But if they made a if they made a lower stack non-plated version, I would totally wear this around town. We need that TYR Topo Cyclone. So yeah, of course it's going to have a really stiff plate, can't bend it at all, but with just a smidge of flexibility up in the forefoot, you probably can't even see it bend. But it's designed, its purpose is to be really good for supporting stronger, more muscular, more powerful runners, which is why we get this nice thick wide base. On the inside here, we got a little bit of a sock liner. It doesn't feel like it's Piva. And then the tongue, we do have a 
discuss it. In the back, of course, we have that nice structured heel counter, pretty similar to what we saw in the New Balance SC Elite the other day. And then on the bottom here, we have a decent amount of rubber covering. And again, look at that, guys. They extended it all the way up to the back. So we don't, we shouldn't have too much exposed foam. This is going to be the main area of wear for most runners right here around this outside lateral area. There's a little bit of exposed foam in the back. That should be much of a problem. But we do have most of this covered, which is nice. Just holding it in my hands, I've got to say, though, just feeling it. And of course, we'll have to test this out. This does not feel like the grippiest compound. And so this is priced at $250, which is market standard. I don't know what their rubber game is like if this is an area where they cut costs, but just holding it in my hands and I've held and felt a lot of shoes, it feels like this rubber might not be the grippiest. So we will have to see. I'll have plenty of opportunities to try this out in the wet weather. But if it is grippy, that'll be great because it looks like a nice overall, the construction of the shoe looks really high quality. Let's do a little bit of a QA check though and get this bad boy on the scale and see how they weigh. All right guys, it is zeroed out. We got the right shoe, 240. That is lighter than the New Balance SC Elite. And these are a 10.5. Wow. The SC Elite came in at 246, and those were exactly 246.0 grams across both of them. So we'll see how the QA is on this, though. Oh, it just went up to 241. Okay, hold on. Okay, zero it out. Put the right shoe back on. Okay, 241. Now let's check the left. 243. That is not bad. That is a lot better than even Nike. I think Nike had a few grams of error, maybe three to five grams. The Hoka was a little bit rough in terms of quality control. We had 14 grams difference, but two grams difference, that's nice. Let's try this again, just to make sure again. Left shoe, we got 243. Right shoe, we got 240.5. So yeah, two and a half grams difference, that's not bad. For a first crack at a running shoe, really nice job with the quality control TYR. And that's what I've heard about this brand, that's what other folks have told me who are familiar with this brand from Run and Swim, that they do a really nice job with their quality control and make well-built products. And holding this in my hand, I don't see really any areas of weakness in terms of the construction, how it's put together. Now, because these are designed for former converted athletes or former lifters or heavier, stronger runners, one of the key elements that they were looking for when they spec'd it was stability. And you can see we do have a nice flat platform. So the rocker here isn't gonna be as aggressive as some of those other shoes we've been running in. It really just starts up at the front and we have a nice wide base and very, very flat platform through the back. So for heel strikers, we'll see. I'm a heel striker and my plan for this run, which is tomorrow, we're getting a little sneak peek early access today, but my plan for this run is to probably do most of it at a nice aerobic effort, maybe mix some marathon pace miles in there. So we gotta get some dinner in, go to sleep early, edit some videos tonight, and then we'll be back at it early in the morning to put these TYR Valkyrie Elite Carbon to the test. All right, guys, I will see you in the morning for the first run. Tell you the truth guys, I'm really not feeling this long run. I am tired, but we got the bagel, a little tailwind endurance fuel, trying to rejuvenate. That's the motto, still, always, up your best. So we're gonna get these miles up. All right, let's go with the Patagonia joggers today. Guys, let me know what your favorite winter jogging pants are. I'm doing a little bit of a comparison. We got the Patagonia, the REI, I'm trying to get some Tracksmith. So let me know if there's a winter jogging pant that you want to try or you want to see me test, let me know. Also, should we go with the OS first? I think we're gonna go with the features today. These are my standard, standard guys features. tell you I was not feeling it but that little half a bagel one servant of tailwind before the run and some Conway the machine and I am back in it anyway putting these TYRs on makes me feel like Brantford Winston worth up in here I need some uh, croakies mid calves and a sweet pair of shades because these look like some turf dogs 
Anyway, plan for the run this morning is 20 to 22 miles. Now, I've already banked 99 miles on the week, which I didn't even do that intentionally. I think I was just shooting for 100 to 110, but it just worked out that way because I did an accidental triple on Monday to test the speed twos. And then I ended up just getting some good quality high mileage days in testing a lot of these plated new racing shoes this week. So today, 22 miles, I'm really just gonna go for some time on feet. And this is a shoe that's designed to be fast, but it's not gonna be like a vapor fly. It's not gonna be too aggressive. And even just putting it on now, it's a little bit flatter. And I think what they're really targeting with, like I said, guys, is these converted runners. You know, us washed up lax bros, us former basketball players. By the way, did you know, guys, I was a sharpshooter when I played basketball. This was, I don't know, 2013, 2014. I've gotten my time in playing ball sports. And that's what these are for. Former athletes who have played sports, who've lifted and who are now into running. Any H word athletes out there. And because of that, they've added a lot more support than any other carbon plated racer that I've tried. Even just standing in these right here, they feel very stable. Even more stable than those New Balance SC Elites that we had on the other day. These are very flat. That's what I noticed yesterday. There's almost no rocker in the back and the rocker starts really up here aggressively in the forefoot. It angles up. It might be just as aggressive as that Hoka. The geometry in the back isn't as aggressive and the foam doesn't feel as crazily soft as the top layer of Piva in that Hoka, but it does feel very angled up here. So this is gonna be an interesting one for me because I am not a forefoot striker. I am a heel to midfoot striker. And they said through their research and with some of the CrossFit athletes that they've worked with, they found that those types of athletes tend to land more up to this part of the shoe. And that's why they've given it this extended base and this rocker up in the front. Let's do a little rubber test here. Feels okay. That SC Elite was super squeaky. Someone said it sounded like a squeegee on this porch. And it did. I'm doing the cha-cha slide and we're not getting too much squeaking here. And we'll have to test these on a wet day. But like I said yesterday, the rubber does not feel that sticky. Just getting a little walk in here. It feels like a decent shoe to just walk around in. I'm not having any issues with stability. Yeah, the most notable thing, guys, is just how flat this platform is. I do feel like I could walk around in these if I had to put a pair of racing shoes on and then walk around all day after a half marathon or something this wouldn't be a bad option for that i could have these on my feet for a few hours and feel completely fine now if we're thinking about the fit the toe box is decently generous i'm right up against the side here it's definitely not narrower than a saucony but it's not too much wider so i think if you have a wide foot in these you may need to go up half a size actually i'll report back after this run but i went ten and a half that's my that's my normal size and my tip of my toe is right here so perfect those new ounces we tried the other day were a little snug but these fit true to size lengthwise and they aren't too wide in the toe box that's actually one thing i'm surprised about i thought they would give us a little bit more width out here but pretty standard running shoe fit i think they might have specced the last of these against other popular brands that's what i'm assuming since they're not a running brand and so these seem like they fit actually pretty similar to nike and saucony in terms of the plan for the run today, just aiming to get 20 to 22 miles time on feet. If I feel like picking up the pace, I will, but probably anywhere from a seven to eight minute pace today, nothing too crazy. These are a very clean looking shoe. I mean, around the back here, you can see they just got this one stripe. I really like how this looks. These, they just look like a pair of turf dogs though. I feel like I'm about to go scoop up some GBs. Yeah, and on foot from the top, these things are sick. I, I absolutely love the styling on these. And they've gone with something completely different than what we've seen in any other running shoe. This is just a much cleaner, much simpler look than anything else that's offered on the market right now. It's not showy at all. It's just, you put these on, you feel like you want to get the job done. And with these black joggers, this is a nice look. And underfoot, walking around and doing this little squish thing here, which this is my this is my favorite running trope, running video trope. Shout out to the person who invented this, by the way. But squishing it like this feels really similar to that Saucony Power Run PB. We're gonna have to see how it runs, but I'm excited to get some miles in this thing. Let us get to it. <laughs> on the track.
man, I'm winded. I have to run a little lax warm up here. Time to get this run. If I'm feeling good, I do have a Jack Daniels workout back pocket. So depending on how I feel, I might push the pace a little bit in these guys. But let's get to it and I'll report back. Oh man, 22 miles at a 709 pace. That was absolutely pain cave at the end. But shout out to TYR, man. I am impressed with these guys. Holy smokes. We put in the work. I told you I had that Jack Daniels workout back pocket. <laughs> I ended up doing it. I'm struggling right now. We finished the whole, I never finished my whole tail and drink. We finished the whole thing. So I gotta get some recovery mix in real quick. Then we'll come back out here, give you these insights. And would you look at that mystery box, another one. Also, the laces stayed completely tied. Nice job with the laces, TYR. They specced them right from the vapor fly too. Good job. Doing three scoops today. Tail recovery mix. Uno. Dos. Tres. And then we got a little unmarked performance enhancing substance. I'm just kidding. Well, I'm not kidding. It does enhance my performance, but it's completely legal. It is creatine from a brand that gets a ton of free press already. So we don't do free advertising for them on this channel. But hey, if you're a brand that sells creatine and you want to sell me some, let me know. And yes, creatine does help for runners. It's not just for lifters. It's not just for former relax bros trying to get big. Oh, not too bad today. Minimal spillage, but no powder. Charlie will be happy. What's up guys? I just logged my run in Strava and I was looking to upload these shoes and they don't even have the brand listed here. The disrespect. They don't have TYR. Watch this. Gear. Let's just add shoes. Boom. Brand. They have Tommy Hilfiger listed in here. They have Tracksmith. A brand called Tropic Feel. Tesla. They have Tesla in here. No TYR. Come on, Strava. Put some respect on the TYR name. Shout out to these Hoka Aura Lux recovery slides, by the way. And if you don't have a pair of these yet, pick one up. They're an absolute game changer for walking around the house after tough workouts. They just completely take the pressure off your legs. These ones are actually a little bit gone for me. I got them in November 2022 after Charlotte Marathon, so I need a new pair. But these things are super comfy. It's like walking around with a gel Nimbus or a 1080 all day, but even better. Alright guys, I just finished 22 miles in the TYR Valkyrie Elite Carbon and I've got to say I am highly impressed. This is essentially what I was hoping the New Balance SC Elite V4 would be. And mind you, I, I never do this guys by the way, I took these out for a 22 mile run on the first run. It was a little bit of a gamble but I wasn't sure when I would be able to slot this in for a first run because I've had some other stuff coming in and I just wanted to get this video out so I decided to use the long run as the first run opportunity for this and I'm glad I did because these were amazing for this workout. Now I talk a lot about trade-offs on this channel, right? And I talked about with the SE Elite, you can't have fun and stable at the same time. And one of the key things 
that I noticed about this shoe right away was it's fun, it's bouncy, it has that classic Piba feel to it that I felt was missing a little bit from the SCLE V4, but at the same time, it is extremely stable. They did a really nice job specking this for bigger runners, for taller runners, for us runners who might not have that typical runner build, super wiry and light, and it felt like it had enough bulk in it to really support me. Now, for this run, I ended up doing that 22 mile Jack Daniels workout. So first two warm up, and then I did miles three to six at a threshold pace. Then I did 10 relaxed miles, and I closed it out with two different sets of two miles at threshold pace. And I was in the absolute pain cave for the last two miles of threshold there. But these are the types of workouts that once you've built up multiple months of doing two hour long runs can really take the fitness to the next level. So this was probably the most quality workout I've gotten in yet. And this was a great shoe to support that because unlike that Saucony Endorphin Speed 4, which we reviewed last week on the 22 mile long run, when I stepped on the shoe and I stepped on the gas and felt like I was putting down some serious power, this thing really did a nice job supporting me. And that's something that was lacking a lot from the Piba feel in that Saucony Endorphin Speed 4. I mentioned this last week, I felt like Zion back at Duke when he exploded that Nike, right? Every time I tried to go down to that six flat pace, which for me is that threshold effort that I was holding today for those eight miles, that shoe just felt like it wasn't gonna support my weight well enough. And that's exactly what this thing is designed to do. It feels really robust and like it can stand up to some serious usage. So the other thing that I absolutely loved about this shoe was the rocker up front. You really can feel it come alive when you're running at that marathon pace and faster. So for me, I didn't do much actually around marathon pace. I went dip below that today. So holding that six flat, but when I was down there, I could really feel the toe popping off. And one of the things I was concerned with is because if you look at a shoe like the Saucony Endorphin Pro 3, there's more of a full rocker profile. This thing does not have too much of a rocker in the back here. It's very flat. There's a tiny little bit. You can see there's a tiny little bit where it curves up, but most of the rocker you're gonna get is up here in the front. However, it did still really work well for mid to rear foot striking, which is how I usually run at these faster paces. And the foam felt lively for the duration of the run. Now, during the first four miles that I had at threshold, one of the things I was looking out for, because this is something that I noticed in the Hoka, and the New Balance and also the Boston 12, which was my favorite speed training shoe for the last block and heading into this block. I was looking out for how is it on corners? How does it do with turning around these tight bends? And especially in my neighborhood, very hilly, how is it gonna do navigating those passes? This thing was an absolute champ on anything where there was a little bit of instability in the road or there was a turn on a cul-de-sac. I felt very planted and very stable in this thing. This might be the most stable shoe out there for racing, even a little bit better than the New Balance SC Elite V4, which I tested a few days ago. Now the Piva feel on this is very similar to that Saucony Endorphin Pro 3. As I mentioned, I think it might even be sourced from the same exact manufacturer as the P-Backs in there. And with that, you're getting a very high quality ride. It feels like a top tier racing shoe. And with where they placed the plate, it didn't feel too harsh at everyday running paces. So one of the things I noticed yesterday, I don't know if I pointed this out in my little first look up there, but you can see where the plate is. We have probably less than half the foam below the plate. So you're gonna be getting a decent amount of foam above the plate. So you don't get too much of that harsh feeling coming through, which for me at that seven to eight minute per mile, more relaxed pace made the shoe feel pretty good. So I have to see how the durability is. We'll also have to see how the rubber grip is. It was dry today. I didn't have any issues traction going over leaves and dirt today but i really want to test this on the wet because i have a feeling that might be a key weakness of the shoe but this power i almost called this power run pb but the foam that they have in here the launch px in the saucony the power run pb is pretty durable in the pro 3 when paired with the carbon fiber plate i can't say the same thing when it's paired with the plastic plate feels like that plastic plate just doesn't do enough with it but when it's paired with the carbon fiber plate i actually have my pro 3 the pink version up at around i think 270 miles right now something like that maybe 250 miles and i can still run in it i can still train in it so at 250 dollars this should be a decently durable shoe to do some training in and also to race in. But of course, we're gonna have to put this one through the ringer because it seems like it's gonna be a shoe that I wanna reach for throughout this training cycle. Now, in terms of the upper, it was very comfortable, no hot spots here. However, I think just for me personally, I might need to bump up to an 11. I've been doing 10.5 and everything. I don't know if this high mileage is making my feet expand, but my left foot feels like it just needs a little bit more room. And also running in the New Balance, which was a half size too small out of 10, that completely shredded my pointer finger toe 
toenail. So a little bit tight for me in the true to size, but that's just because my left foot is a little bit messed up right now. But the upper itself was very comfortable. I had no issues with hot spots, no issues with friction or rubbing. My left foot is a little bit wide and I had no issues with the width of the toe box at all. I do think it's maybe a little smidge wider than the Saucony, but the general fit and feel of this was very comfortable. The lockdown was also great and there's nothing special or amazing about what they did to the shoe. They just looked at what the market leaders were doing and improved everything maybe two to five percent or just copied and pasted it onto this like they did with these laces so they didn't mess up anything on the shoe i think that's an issue that sometimes new brands have or even established brands who have a good product they try to go out there and do something that's different do something radical tyr did not take that approach they said let's make a clean simple running shoe that performs well let's look what the market leaders are doing and let's make our differentiation being the people that we are going to serve and that's where this thing really shines is TYR has a clear idea of who they want to make a product for and it's us retired lax bros it's us bigger hobby joggers it's us stronger and bigger runners who feel like some of those super shoes some of those marathon racing shoes on the market like the Nike Vaporfly maybe aren't as robust as we need them to be for the later stages of those marathons and so if you consider yourself a bigger runner if you're over 5'10", 5'11", if you're over 150, 160, if you're more muscular, if you found that shoes like the New Balance SC Elite V3, the Nike Vaporfly are a little bit too soft for you, if you found that the Adidas Audios Pro 3 is maybe too narrow for you and not as stable enough, this is going to be the racing shoe for you. And of course, I've got to put some more miles in it, but a two and a half hour long run with some serious pace in there is enough to know that this is going to be a pretty good shoe for the long haul. Now, with all of that being said, if you are a lighter, more efficient runner, you might not love this shoe. And when I was going in more of that 730, eight minute pace, it wasn't a harsh ride at all. Like I said, you can't feel that plate, but it is a firmer, more structured, more robust shoe. So it doesn't feel like a vapor fly where even when you're going at that slower pace, you can feel that foam compressing a ton under your foot. It does feel like it wants you to put some more force into it to get the most benefit out of it. So if you're a lighter runner and you're gonna be running a 3.30 plus hour marathon or a two hour half marathon, this is not gonna be the shoe for you. This is really specced and built, purpose built for bigger, stronger runners. Now I've had a few shoes sent to me for free this year. This one, the Alpha Fly 3 and the New Balance SC Elite V4. Now, I told you guys with the Alpha Fly 3 and the New Balance SC Elite V4, I am not completely blown away by these. However, with this guy here, I am blown away by it, and I think they did a really nice job. And for most runners out there, if you're a bigger runner, if you're carrying a little bit more weight, if you need some more stability, which most of us do for the marathon, this is going to be a much better option than that Nike Alpha Fly and it's coming in $35 cheaper than that Alpha Fly. I do understand though that with TYR being a newer brand, it's kind of a tough sell to pay market price for an untested running shoe. Well, it's not untested because I'm testing it right now, but for a running shoe where you're not sure what the brand is gonna be bringing to the table. But I do understand that it might be still a little bit of a tough ask to buy this for 250, which you can get an Endorphin Pro 3 for that or that New Balance SC Elite V4. I'm gonna reach out to them, see if I can get some sort of discount code or something to bring the price down on this to 225 because I am excited about the shoe and I would love to get more people trying it because I think this is going to be one of the top options for a lot of runners out there who aren't served super well by the current market leaders. So I've run a lot of the top marathon racing shoes that are coming out right now and my favorites so far have been the Hoka Cielo X1 and this guy if I had to race a marathon tomorrow it would probably be between those two shoes that I would be lacing up to go out there and try to set a PR. So of course, we gotta get some more miles in this thing, but after a 22 mile hard effort, I can tell you I endorse this thing so far and I'm really looking forward to putting this through the ringer. All right guys, as always, I appreciate you watching. Let me know any questions you have about the TYR Valkyrie Elite Carbon and I'll be back tomorrow with another video.